In this example, we're going to diagonalize the following matrix. Okay, so diagonalization is a um, it's a way to factor a matrix. Okay, where if, if you look in this box here, okay, so we want to come up or construct a in terms of p, d, and p inverse. So the matrix P will contain um, well, actually, it's a matrix that will have the where the columns of that matrix are the eigenvectors, okay? And then D is the diagonal matrix where the entries along the main diagonal will be the eigen will, will have the eigenvalues, okay? And then we have P inverse, okay? So the first thing we need to do is to obviously find, okay, we need to find the eigenvalues, okay? Because those are going to make up for uh, the main entries uh, for D for the matrix D. Okay, so the first step is to find. Okay, right? We need to find. Okay, the eigenvalues of A. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, we need to, right, so we need to find the uh, determinant of this system. Okay, uh, determinant of A minus lambda I. Okay, so we have 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 3, negative 1, minus 1, negative 2, and 2. Okay. And then minus lambda. So we have the identity matrix here. So three by three identity matrix. Okay. All right. So this is going to give us two minus lambda, two negative one, one three minus lambda. Negative one, negative one, minus two, and two minus lambda. Okay. All right. So we need to go ahead and find the determinant of this. Okay. Of this matrix. Okay. So let me just put in my. So technically, this is. Right, we have the bars here. So we want to find the determinant of this matrix. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use uh, I think it's easier in this case to do the using cofactors. Okay. All right, so let's do that here. So the determinant of this. Okay, so starting down here. So I'm going to use the um, first. I'll use the first row here. Okay. So we're going to have 2 minus lambda times, okay, the determinant of 3 minus lambda negative 1 minus 2, 2 minus lambda. Okay, and then, so then we're going to have, let's see, I think I'm going to use, well, actually, sorry, I'm going to use the first column. Okay, not the first row. So, so we have minus 1 then, because we have positive and negative. Okay, so minus 1 times the determinant of 2, negative 1, minus 2, and 2 minus lambda. Okay, and then last one, okay, we have, so we have plus, actually it's going to be minus 1. Again, using the, so I'm using the first column, so minus 1 times the determinant of 2, negative 1, 3 minus lambda, and negative 1. Okay, so now let's simplify this. So we have 2 minus lambda. This is going to be uh, 6 minus 5 lambda plus lambda squared minus 2. Okay. And then minus, OK, 
Okay, this is going to give us 4 minus 2 lambda minus 2. And then here we get, go ahead and distribute the minus 1. So I get 2 minus 3 plus lambda. Okay. All right. Okay, so, uh, so now we can multiply everything out and simplify, okay? So that's going to give us minus lambda cubed plus 7 lambda squared minus 11 lambda plus 5, okay? So now we're going to set this, okay? So we want to set this equal to 0 to get our eigenvalues. Okay, so solving this, it's going to give us lambda equals to 1, Okay, and this is actually a multiplicity of 2. And lambda equals to 5. Okay, so to solve this equation, you may want to review uh, something from pre-calculus. Okay, so you can use, you know, you can use the uh, Descartes rule of signs, and then from there you can use long division uh, to, to find the roots to this. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, so step two. So we found the eigenvalues. Now step two is to find the corresponding eigenvectors. Okay. All right, so let's start with lambda equals to one. Okay, so we have to substitute this back into our, okay, substitute this back into here. Okay, so we're going to get uh, 1, 2, negative 1. Okay. So 1, 2, negative 1. And then we're going to get 1, 2, negative 1. And then negative 1, negative 2, and 1. Okay. So we want to find the, the null space for this. Okay. All right. So this is, remember, this is going to be, this is the matrix corresponding to the homogeneous system. Okay. We're going to find the null space of this. Okay. So this, I'm going to go ahead and do the REF on this then. So this is going to give us 1, 2, negative 1, and then we have a row of zeros here. Okay. So then, okay, right, we have 1, 2, negative 1. Okay, just augment the zero vector onto there. Okay. All right, so we have two free variables here and one basic variable. So we're going to let, let's see, I'll let x3 be equal to, let's see, uh, t, and x2 is going to be equal to, let's say, s. So t, so t is a real value, and so is s. Okay, so then from here, okay, from x1, okay, x1 is going to be equal to 2, actually, it's going to be equal to, um, sorry, uh, minus 2, x2 plus x3. So that means, so since x2 is s and x3 is t, so we're going to get minus 2 s plus t. Okay. All right, so that means okay, we have, for x, we're going to have, for x1, we have minus 2s plus t. For x2, we have s. And for x1, sorry, for x3, we have t. Okay. Okay, and then this can be 
uh, we can write this in parametric form. So we're going to have s, so s will be multiplied by minus 2, 1, 0. And then we can factor out t. So that's going to leave us with 1, 0, and 1. Okay. So our basis, okay, so the basis for the eigenspace, okay, are going to be these two vectors that you see here. Okay, for lambda equals to 1, it's going to be this vector and this vector, okay? So the basis, so we write this as a set, okay? So this is going to, uh, this is going to be part of our P matrix, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and identify these. Um, so this is going to be V1 and I'm going to call this V2. Okay. All right. So let's find the uh, eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals to 5. Okay. 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 So for lambda equals to 5. Okay, so again, plugging lambda equals to 5 back into the system here, okay, we're going to get uh, negative 3, let's see, yeah, so minus 3, 2, negative 1, okay, and then 1, negative 2, negative 1, And then for the last row, we have negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Okay, so now, so let's do an REF on this. So we're going to get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Or zero, yeah, zero, one, one, and then zero, all zeros on the last row. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So then we're going to solve for the null space for this system for this particular matrix. Okay. So. Okay. All right. So just like before, okay, we're going to um, come up with our solution and then write it in parametric form. So in this case, we get one free variable. So we're going to let x3 be equal to t, okay, where t is some real value. Okay, and then x2, okay, so from so from here, okay, x2 is going to be equal to minus x3, which means that that's going to be minus t. And then from here we have x1 equals to minus x3, which is minus, which is going to give us minus t. Okay, so then we have, okay, Okay, so we have x1, so minus t, x2 is minus t, x3 is t. Okay, so writing this in parametric form, okay, we have that minus, we get minus 1, minus 1, and 1. Okay. Okay, so that's our 
that's going to form the basis. Okay, so this vector here is going to be the basis for the eigenspace for lambda equals to 5. Basis for the eigenspace for lambda equals to five. Okay, so we can write this as okay the set. All right. Okay, so let's call this V three. Okay. So now we're ready to construct our uh, construct P now. So that's step three. Okay. Okay. So we construct P, okay, from the vectors, okay, from from the eigenvectors. All right, so from the well, we're using the the basis, right? The basis uh, eigen, the basis for the eigen space, okay. Okay. So P, okay. So just a notation, okay. So we're going to say that P, okay, is going to be constructed by V one. a little bit bigger. So we have V1, V2, and then V3. So those are going to form the columns for P. Okay. So from there, okay, so for V1 we had uh, negative 2, 1, 0. For V2, we had 1, 0, 1. And then for V3, we have minus 1, negative 1, 1. Okay. So here the order doesn't, uh, the order is not very important. Um, you could put V3 first, then V1, V2. Okay. But then if we do that, we have to make sure that um, that it corresponds to the eigenvalues. Okay. That we're going to, we're going to construct for D. Okay. All right. So step four, okay, that's going to be the uh, step to construct D. Okay, so we're going to construct our diagonal our diagonal matrix, okay, from the eigenvalues. Okay, so D, okay, so D is going to turn out to be, all right, so this is what I was mentioning earlier about the, the, the ordering of our eigenvectors, okay, since we put, so for V1 and V2, that came from the eigenvalue of 1, okay, so we want to put, okay, we want to put our eigenvalues, Okay, we want to put the eigenvalue, if we had one, okay, so we're going to put that here, okay. And since we're dealing with three by three, then this is going to, D is going to be a three by three matrix. The other, right, and so since lambda equals one was a, remember that it was a um, double root, okay, we had, right, lambda equals one was multiplicity of two. So we have to write it down twice, okay. So we're going to put the other, okay, so we put the other eigenvalue here, okay. All right. And then there, so now for the last, okay, for the last eigenvalue was 5, and that corresponded to this eigenvector V3. So we're going to put that into here now. So it's going to be 0, 0, and then 5. Okay, and so that's, that's our diagonal matrix. Okay. All right, so so now 
all we need to do is to find the inverse of p. We need to, okay. Okay, so remember that we have a is equal to p times d times p inverse. So p inverse, so we can calculate that and you can either do that by, um, you can use a calculator or you can do it by hand by augmenting the, the matrix P with the identity matrix and then doing the REF on that, okay? So P inverse, okay, let's do that over here. So P inverse turns out to be uh, minus one fourth, one half, one fourth, one fourth, one half, three fourths, minus one fourth, minus one half, and then one fourth. Okay. So that's our solution. Okay. So we we know p, we know p inverse, we know d. Okay. So so in summary, right? We had. Okay. So we should be able to check that a right. So if you take a, sorry. So A is written, can be written as P, so we had minus 2, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, uh, sorry, 0, 1, 1, times D, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 5, times P inverse. Okay, so okay, so if you multiply those out, you get you get back uh, the matrix A that we start out with. Okay, so this is a really nice factorization technique. Okay, and uh, we can use this actually to solve systems as well, but we won't be looking into that. Um, but is there is a way to do that? Okay. All right, so this is the, so just going back, okay, so this process to diagonalize the matrix, first you gotta find the eigenvalues of that matrix. The eigenvalues of that matrix uh, is going to form the diagonal matrix D, okay? And then once you find the eigenvalues, then you find the corresponding eigenvectors, okay? And those are going to form the columns of P. So now, as I mentioned, the order is important, okay? So, well, I mean, you have to keep track of your columns because if you switch the columns here, then you have to switch the columns for D, okay? So the, so they should be entered, there should be a correspondence between the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues, okay, for your D matrix, okay? All right, 